Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To carry on with the general anatomy lectures, I'm gonna cover in this presentation the anatomy of the joints. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansoura University, Egypt. The objectives of my presentation will be, first we'll cover some definitions, then we'll talk about the classifications of the joints into fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial joints. Then I will talk about the structure of the synovial joint and its stability. A joint is also called articulation, is a point of contact between two or more bones. The science that deal with the study of joints is called arthrology. We can classify the joints according to either according to the nature of the substance connecting the bones together into fibrous joints or syndesmoses, cartilaginous joints or synchondroses, synovial joints. You can notice that in these three types, the prefix is the same, which is syn. Syn means together and the root is different. So... In the fibrous joints, we have dysmosis. Dysmosis means fibrous. Chondrosis means cartilage. Ovial means looks like the egg white. Or we can classify them according to the range of movements into synarthrosis, which is an immovable joint, amphiarthrosis, which is a slightly movable joint, or diarthrosis, which is a freely movable joint. To start with the fibrous joints, the bones in the fibrous joints are connected together by fibrous tissue. The joint has no cavity because it is filled with fibrous tissue. No or very limited movements occur at this joint and they are classified into sutures, syndesmoses and gomphoses. The sutures are found in the skull. There is a thin layer of fibrous tissue unites the edges of the bones together. So when the two bones unite, it looks like a suture. There is no movement at these joints. Some sutures are ossified in old age. The next type is syndesmosis. There is a space between the bones. This space is filled with fibrous tissue and is either arranged in a bundle or a ligament or in a sheet-like membrane we call it the interosseous membrane inter means between osseous means bones so it is a membrane holding the two bones together slight movement can occur between these bones next we have gomphosis the only examples in our body are the roots of the teeth with the sockets within the bones of the jaws either the upper jaw or the lower jaw. It's in a form of a cone shaped pig fits into a socket like this. A new movement takes place at this type of joint. Next we have the cartilaginous joints. Here the bones are connected by cartilage, either hyaline or fibrocartilage. Here also the joint has no cavity because this space is filled with cartilage. So there is no or limited movements take place at this type of joints. The cartilaginous joints are classified into primary cartilaginous joints, also known as synchondrosis, or secondary cartilaginous joints, also known as symphysis. The synchondrosis or primary cartilaginous joints, as we can see in this diagram, the connecting structure is a hyaline cartilage. An example of this joint is the epiphyseal growth plate that connects the epiphysis with the diaphysis of the growing bone. Eventually, it ossifies, thus it is a temporary joint. Next, we have the secondary cartilaginous joints or the symphysis. The ends of the articulating bones are covered with hyaline cartilage, while the space or the cavity of the joint is filled with a flat disc of fibrocartilage. Examples of these joints are the joints that lie in the midline of our body as the pubic symphysis between the two pubic bones, the intervertebral joints between the bodies of the vertebrae, 
This type of joints allow limited movement and there is no ossification take place in these joints, so it is permanent joints. The synovial joints have a space between the articulating bones called a synovial cavity. It allows a wide range of movements and classified according to the following, either the shape of the articulating surfaces or according of the number of the axes of movements. If we look at the structure of the synovial joint, we can see that the ends of the articulating bones are covered by a layer of hyaline or articular cartilage and the joint is surrounded by two layers an outer fibrous layer called the capsule of the joint and lined by a very thin layer from inside it's called the synovial membrane that secretes synovial fluid. The capsule is reinforced from outside by ligaments which run in different directions and also surrounded by muscles which will add stability to the joint and also allow movements. Some joints, like the knee here, contains either ligaments, as in the cruciate ligaments you can see inside the joint, or cartilages which lie within the joints, we call it menisci. For the classification of synovial joints, as I said before, we can classify them according to the number of axes of movements, or according to the shape of the articular surfaces of the ends of the bones that form this joint. According to the number of axes of movements, we have either uniaxial joints or biaxial joint or multiaxial joints. Uniaxial means it moves only around one axis. Biaxial means it, the joint moves around two axes and multiaxial, the joint moves around more than one axis. At the same time, according to the shape of articular surfaces, we have either Hinge or pivot joints, these are uniaxial joints. Saddle and ellipsoid joints, these are biaxial joints. And we have ball and socket joints, which is multiaxial joint. In the same time, we have what's called no axial joints. These are plane joints. The hinge shaped joints which is uniaxial, like the elbow joint. The lower end of the humerus is convex in shape, while the upper end of the ulna and radius are concave in shape. So they fit together in a form of a hinge. Here in this type of joints, the pointed surface of one bone articulates with a ring formed partially by another bone and completed by a ligament. For example, the superior radio ulnar joint. In this example, you can see the pointed upper end of the radius fits into a ring made by the ulna and completed by a ring made of a ligament. In this joint, the radius rotates around its vertical axis within this ring. In this joint, the articular surface of one bone is saddle shaped and the articular surface of the other bone fits into this saddle. For example, the carbometacarbal joint of the thumb. Actually, it looks like a man sitting on a saddle. So the movements allowed here are around two axes, rocking from side to side or forward and backward. In these joints, the convex oval-shaped projection of one bone fits into an oval-shaped depression of another bone. For example, the metacarbophalangeal joints. The movements here are flexion and the extension and also adduction and abduction of the fingers. In ball and socket joints, which are multi-axial joints, there is a ball-like surface of one bone that fits into a cup-shaped depression of another bone. For example, the shoulder joint. In this type of joints, it allows uh, movement in multi-direction or multi-axis. It allows flexion and extension. It allows adduction and abduction. It allows medial rotation and lateral rotation. And if you combine all of these movements together, you get circumduction. This type of joint is called no axial joints or plane joints or gliding joints. 
The articular surfaces of these bones are flat or slightly curved. They just allow gliding or sliding over each other. For example, the intertarsal or intercarpal joints. How the joint gets its stability? By three factors. Bony factor from the shape of the articular surfaces. It determines what movements are possible and what movements are not. So the more movable joints, the less stable joints. The second factor is the number and position of the ligaments that lie around or within the joint itself. These ligaments unite the bones and prevent excessive or undesirable movements. So the more ligaments you get around the joint, the more stable the joint is. Third factor is the muscle tone and the muscles around the joints and the tendons crossing these joints. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And hit the notification bell so you can know if I upload another video.